Mail merge is basically merging many things into one, thereby creating many of the one. And in this example, I've got one document, but I have a database that has many clients. So if I merge many of the clients into this one document, then it'll create many documents, one for each client. So all I have to do is create this letter once and then using the mail merge feature to then insert the fields that I have within my database, like their first name, last name, into this letter. I mean, if you're keeping track of your customers in a database, and I don't know what database you use, but don't you usually have a field for their first name and last name? That's all I'm doing here, inserting the first name and last name. So if their first name is Bob and their last name is Jones, I would type in the letter dear, and then insert the field from the database for the first name that contains all their first names, and then their last name field, and then any other field that's pertinent to, well, in this case, the letter that I'm going to be sending off or printing for each client. Like if I have the number of orders they made, I could insert it after, like right here, purchasing. So thank you for purchasing six online video trainer training videos. You know, make it more personable. So like, ooh, he really knows about my orders here or the number of training videos that I purchased. In any case, once you hit the mail merge button, then it pulls in from the first record, again, the fields for the first name and last name, and then the number of training videos. And then when it goes to the next record to pull it in, it duplicates this letter. So we have a separate letter for the second record, and then a separate letter for the third record, and so on until, well, if you have a thousand clients, it'll have this letter duplicated a thousand times, one for each client. So to get started, let's come up here and click on the mailings tab, go to the start mail merge group, and click on start mail merge. Now we're doing letters here, but we'll cover the rest. Like, you know, if you want to send this letter via email off to everybody within your database and they have email addresses, or you want to print envelopes for everybody or labels or do a directory, there you go. So you can go ahead and select letters, in which case when you do that, you'll be using all the commands or options up here on the ribbon. Or if you want step-by-step -step instructions, which I recommend for those who are new to the mail merge, by using the mail merge wizard, It'll ask us a bunch of questions, and depending upon our answers, it'll go ahead and create the merge that hopefully we're looking for. So click on it. Opens up the merge wizard over to the right, and the first thing it says is, what type of document are you working on? Well, it's the same five that you see when you clicked on the drop down here. So you can go ahead and select it, and you get a little bit more description about what you have selected down below. And you can see we're on step one of six. So let's go ahead with letter selected because that's what we're going to be doing right now. Let's go ahead and click next, starting the document. So step two, it says, do you want to use the current document? Well, yeah, that's the letter that I want to merge. But if not, you can start from a template. If you saved a template, you can go ahead and select that then click on select template, go find your template. But it warns you that when you select the template, it'll overwrite what you have here it'll delete it and replace it with that template. So that's fine. Let's click cancel. I don't want to do that. You can also start from an existing document. If it's not a template, you can go ahead and click open. Gives you the same warning. And so I don't want to overwrite this, but click cancel. I want to use what I have here and then click next to select the recipients or the database, the people that I want to send this off to. Now, when it comes to the database, you see up here you've got three options. You can use an existing list, and the ones that I recommend or that I'll be covering is like Microsoft Excel, Access, or Word. Those can all be used as databases. Also, Outlook, which has a separate option for the Outlook program. That within Outlook, it's not just an email program, but it also stores information like for your contacts who you can send email to. Also has a calendar that you can schedule meetings and appointments, set tasks, assign tasks, well a lot more. In any case if you want to learn a lot more about Outlook then you can watch my Outlook training videos or you can go ahead and type in a new list. Now when you type in a new list, let's go ahead and select that, you come down here and click on create and well there you go. You have so many fields here, you can click and drag and see all the fields that are available. And if you don't like any of those, or you want to add more fields, then you can click on Customize Columns, and there they are. And if you're like, you know what, I only want to keep track of their home phone, not their work phone, you can select it and delete it, but I'm not going to do that. And you can also add, click on Add, so if I want to keep track of the number of orders made, or their total orders, Click okie dokie, and it's right there. And you can see that it goes title, first name, last name, title, first name, last name. 
So if you want that right after last name with it selected, you can move up, up, up. Okay, it's going to take a little while. There you go. Then click Okie Dokie. And there you go. Total orders. So for the title, if you want to add a title, Mr. And then I'll type in my first name, hit the tab key, type in my last name, hit the tab key. So I can advance from field to field without using the mouse. And the total orders, let's say I made five. Now when I want to go ahead and create a new entry, I can just come down and click on new entry. And this is Mrs. And we'll do one more. And if you want to get rid of an entry, well, go ahead and with it selected, just hit delete and it's gone. And if you got a lot of entries and you want to find one, we'll go ahead and click on find. And we want to type in who we want to find, like let's do Kurt. Do I want to search in all the fields for Kurt? Or how about just this field, the first name? Good. You can click on it, choose other fields, but first name works. Click find next and it found me. Great. Click cancel. And then when I'm done, go ahead and click okie dokie. And it says OK. You want to save this? We got to save it in a separate file. And what file is it going to save it as? What type? It's going to be a Microsoft Access Database, the extension .mdb. That's access. And if you want to learn more about extensions, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. But in any case, let's give it a name. And we'll call it my new spiffy database. Now by default, it wants to save it in the My Data Sources folder, which is a subfolder to My Documents. Well, that's fine. I can also save it to the desktop. And then click Save. And it opens up for additional options on my database. And we'll go over this in just a minute. But let me go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And you can see the link is to my new Spiffy database. And let me minimize that down to the taskbar because on my desktop, it's right there. That's the logo for Microsoft Access, the key for the database. And so that's where it resides. And it pulls in. Let me click on the button to restore my letter into here. Now, if I don't want to use that, and I want to use another list, and I've got others, then I can come over here and say that I want to select a different list. When I select that, opens it up and says, what do you want? Let's go ahead and click the desktop. And it includes not only Microsoft Word, but also Excel and, of course, Access. Now, why Word? Oh, my goodness. Let's go ahead and click Cancel and minimize that down to the taskbar because I've got my two databases here. In Excel, that's the logo for Excel. Let me double click. There's my database. So I have my row header that has the headings for each column so you know what column you're looking at. This is for the first names, last name, address, and so on. And so when you create your database to be used as a mail merge in Word, you want to make sure that your first row has all your headings here so Word can easily identify the labels for the corresponding data down below. And if not, and your database isn't built correctly, well, the mail merge, you'll be lucky if it works. So you want to make sure you build it correctly here. And you can watch my Excel training videos on how to create the database correctly. And so you can see first name, last name, emails, phone. Let me go ahead and close out. So that's for Excel. How about Word? Let's go ahead and open up my database that I've saved in Word. Double click. And that's all it is. Just like Excel, right? You got a bunch of cells, except this is called a table in Excel. It's called a spreadsheet, but they're all within cells. So in the first row, again, it's important that we have our header row or the headings for each column, the labels for the columns, like this is for first name, that's for last, and so on. And so if you want to create your own database in Word, just make sure that all you have within it is the table and the first row has the labels for each column. Cool. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Go back down below to restore my letter. And let's go ahead and select a different list. Click on it. Opens up desktop. And we can do it from Excel. There's the database. Double click. Now within Excel, I have a total of three worksheets. And where was my data? Well, it was on the first worksheet. And so we want to make sure you select that. If it's on another worksheet, select that. And then down below by default, the first row of data contains column headers. Remember the first row, I called it the header row. Well, make sure it contains the labels for the columns or known as column headers. And then go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And there you go. Hey, total of three from the database. We have Homer Simpson, Mr. Humphreys, and Doug Heffernan. So it pulled that in. I can go ahead and click Okie Dokie and say, nah, let's go ahead and select a different list. 
and then go out there on the desktop so you can see that you know I can pull it in from Word the table within Word double click and there you go it's pulling it in go ahead and click okie dokie and so it works for all of it in any case let me go back to my Excel because I like that it's got more information in it my Excel database double click it's on sheet one okay and there we go there are many things you can do in this edit recipient list for example as it says up here you can use the check boxes to add or remove recipients from the merge so if it brings over people you don't want to include you don't have to go back and create a separate database to include just the ones that you want to include or delete the records just bring them over and go ahead and uncheck them and they won't be included in the final merge and if you need a little help finding them you get some options here each one of these column headers has a drop down arrow that you can click on to do sorting like if you want to sort descending A to Z or descending Z to A there's ascending H's down to the S's you can do the sorts of sort and you can click on the drop down arrow and below that you got some filtering options so if you want to focus on one person for a little bit and not see a bunch of others then go ahead and select like Heffernan and it just filters out everybody else except for him and if you're like oh where did all the records go well one indication is that when you look up here and you see looks like a light blue triangle as opposed to black it means that it's filtering by that field and so you can scroll all the way over to make sure there are no other fields being filtered and if it's just that one then you can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and say that you want to see all you can do advanced sort and filters you can click on the drop down arrow and go down to advanced and it brings up the advanced filter and sort window so it has a tab for filtering records an advanced tab and one for sorting so if you go to the sort it remembers our last sort we did it by last name so if you want to continue and do after you sort it by last name then sort it by their first name so for example if I sort everybody and I have a bunch of people with the last name of Smith after it sorts it and groups all the Smiths together because they have the same last name then I can go ahead and sort it by their first name so within all the Smiths it would then be sorted by their first name if I went ahead and select first name and we can do descending so that way Zoe Smith would be at the top within the Smiths group all the way down to Avery Smith at the very bottom or ascending Avery to Zoe and if I want to be done with this you can go ahead and click clear all and click okie dokie and it goes back to the original sort and then of course you have the advanced filter which you know you can click on the drop down arrow and click on advanced or you can come down here and click on sort or filter it brings up the same window sort same window well it puts you on the sort records tab cancel and then the filter puts you on the filter records tab so you can click on the drop down arrow and say that you're looking for a first name that's equal to or other options not equal to or less than or greater than if you're working with numbers or it contains something so if it equals and we'll say Doug let's go ahead and click okie dokie and before I do that you can do additional ones like and or, or and I go over these functions as it were in Excel and means that it has to meet both conditions this one and that one or means it could be this one or that one either or just has to meet one of them but we'll keep it simple we'll just leave this alone and not do an additional one so click okie dokie and it found Dougie and you can see it's filtered by the first name because of that light blue shade triangle so when you find the people you're looking for you're sorting you're filtering you're removing check marks from those that you don't want to include and you want to clear it all well let's go back to filter and say clear all for the filter go to the sort records if you have any sorts clear all for that click okie dokie and we're back to where we started I want to include Dougie though and then another option you get is you can select the database that's being pulled in here and you can go ahead and click on refresh that way if somebody's editing this if it allows you to at the same time then you can go ahead and pull in more information you can also edit the database so when it comes to editing you cannot delete an entry well it won't let me for my database but I can add a new one click on new entry and we'll do Billy Bob and click okie dokie now when I click OK of course it'll be here in the edit recipients window behind here but also it'll update the Excel workbook that has all the other three right there so let's click okie dokie do you want to update the recipient list again my database the Excel workbook and save these changes to it yes and so there's Billy Bob let's go ahead and take a gander click okie dokie minimize this down to the taskbar 
There's the database. Double click to open it up. Okay, well, it says it's in current use, and so we won't be able to make any changes to it. That's okay. I just wanted to take a look to make sure Billy Bob was added. We'll do read only. There he is. Sweet. Of course, he needs more information, but we're good. Close out. We can exclude him later on. Let me go down here and restore this by clicking on the button. Which brings up a good point. If you want to go back to edit the recipients, you can do it one of a couple of ways. If you're using the step-by-step -step mail merge, everything you see here is up here on the ribbon. So you can click on edit recipient list, brings up the window, close out, or you can come up here on the mailings tab. And there it is, edit recipients list, brings up the same window. We could leave Billy Bob there for the moment, and I'll show you later on how we can excuse him from our mail merge. Let's click okie dokie and continue. To next, write the letter. And you can do it one of a couple of ways. Well, first off, you know, I want a deer, so I'll type in just a little bit more, hit the space bar. And you can add one of these preformatted fields, block of fields, that's going to pull information from your database. You know, if you have a first name, last name, street address, and so on. So you click on the address block and you can select a type of format and then over here it reveals it or gives you a preview of it and if you're like wait a second it's not pulling in the first name or it's not pulling in the last name then what you want to do is you want to come down here if you got problems and click on match fields because what word is trying to do is it's trying to take the fields that it sees as first name to find a match in your database for first name and if it's not spelled exactly as first name or you got something else and it doesn't recognize it well then click on the drop down arrow and find your first name like if it was two letters FN for first name it probably won't find it go ahead and select FN to match it to the first name field in the address block here and so you're just looking for matches if they're not matched then go ahead and find the way that you named it within your database to what they're looking for over here and how word sees it address one address two these aren't matched because well I don't have it in my database and if I did, it probably didn't have the same name, so I have to click on it and choose the way I named it to the way Word's going to see it. Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and click Cancel. So you can go ahead and toggle through to make sure all these records are, well, okay, Billy Bob. That's all right. You can go ahead and select other different formats, like Josh, just first name. So if I go back this way, it just has Doug. It doesn't have his last name, so that's what you're looking at is the format. To include their last name, plus if they have any juniors or seniors, and in any case, find one that works best for you. And if that looks good, you can go ahead and click Okie Dokie, and it adds the address block right there. So how's it going to look? Because I'd like to see how it looks before I actually do the merge. But I put it after deer, so I probably don't need the deer. In any case, if you want to preview it before you actually do the merge, you could come up here on the Mailings tab and go to the Preview Results group and click on Preview. Okay, that doesn't work, although that's very sweet. Dear Doug Heffernan at 97 Hamville Circle. So I could delete the deer, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to show you that you can go ahead and use the address block or even a greeting line. Oh, that's fun. And let's go ahead and come up here and toggle through. There's Mr. Billy Bob. In any case, you can toggle through all that or deselect it to not preview it so you can just see the codes. And you can actually come up here and highlight those fields in case if you're like, okay, quickly, I want to see what merge fields are within my document here. So let's go ahead and delete this. Hit the backspace arrow once, twice it's gone. And you've got a greeting line, so it'll actually put the deer in for you. Oh, I just wasted some work there, didn't I? Busting my hump, putting in deer. In any case, you can see down below in the preview, deer, Wilberforce Humphreys, and it even adds a comma. Oh, that's great. But while you can do that, let me go ahead and click Cancel. You can come up here and do it step by step, like insert the merge field, first name, then hit the space bar because we need a space in between first name and last name, then hit comma, and then you can come up here and click on preview, Wilberforce Humphreys, and then toggle to the next one, Doug Heffernan. Cool. Let's go ahead and deselect that. And let's go to next, preview your letters. And it automatically puts us in the preview view of the results. So you can see it here, and then you can go ahead and toggle back and forth. But we already covered that. And you can also do it within the task pane here. Go to Recipient 2. I want to go to Billy Bob because I don't want him to be included. So we can go ahead and exclude him here. Once I do that, now I just have 1, 2, 3, and no 4. But if I click on Edit Recipient List, either here or up here, same thing. 
there's Mr. Billy Bob. If I want to include him, well, go ahead and check it because when I clicked on exclude, it removed the checkbox. That's all it did. Click okie dokie, and now we're back to four. Oh, and at any point, if you want to add additional fields, you can do so. It's not structured within the step-by-step. -step. It just means, look, this is the sequence that you want to take when it comes to working with the wizard here. So if I forgot a field like, thank you for purchasing, let me put a field here. Come up, click on Insert Merge Field. Videos, well, let me turn off the preview results. There you go, now you can see videos because when it was on, Billy Bob, we just had his name. He hasn't purchased anything from us. Oh, that dirty guy. Let's go ahead and click back so we can see somebody who did like Doug. Hey, he purchased five. That's fabulous. And if you don't want to see the highlights, we can go ahead and deselect it. And I'll go a little bit slower or pick it up so you can watch the video again. In any case, let's go ahead and go to the next step, complete the merge. And it says you can just go right to print or you can edit the letters individually. So what will happen is, well, we just have one page here, one letter. But when we click on edit individually, it'll take all the records. We have a total of four. Bring them over to this one letter and duplicate one for each record. And so we can go from one page to the next and edit them individually so we can make it more personable. Like, you know, down here for Doug, P.S. Hey, we had a great donut party last week. That was fabulous, babes. In any case, let's go ahead and click on edit individual letters. And you can be selective like no not all of them just the current record or from records two to four let's do all click okie dokie opens up a new window so we got our original template that's still there and there you go homer simpson there's page one and you can see down below in the status bar we have a total of four so there's page one two for mr humphreys that is and three and four billy bob and thank you for purchasing online video trainer training videos. Well, we didn't have him as purchasing any, but in any case, you get the idea. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and save this. So later on, you can go ahead and send it off again or close out and say you don't want to save it. So we're back to our mail merge template and you can save that. So later on, if you want to do this again, you can just do some tweaks here if you're going to be using the same thank you letter. So in any case, we can go back to previous steps, make some more changes, close out of here, and use what's up on the ribbon because everything you saw in the step-by-step -step wizard is up here on the ribbon. But you may feel more comfortable by clicking on the start and doing step-by-step. -step. And it, well, takes me back to where I last left here, step five of six, and go previous, go next, and you know, clean it up, make your changes, and call it a day. Now what about the other mail merge options? Like, you know, when you come up here, click on start mail merge. We did letters. How about email messages, envelopes? Well, let's do email messages. So if I go back to the beginning, because I've got the wizard open, previous, 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 and I want to do email messages, so it takes what I have here, and it will send it to everybody I have in my database who has an email address. Sound good? Okay. Let's go ahead and email it now and say next and it switches from the print layout view to the web layout as you can see down below on the status bar that's the one that's highlighted web layout and that's okay and we already have our merge fields and of course you can go ahead and let's give it a space between that merge field and the next word and so we'll be using the current document again we can start from a template or start from an existing document we already covered that so let's go to the next step Let's see, use an existing list. Uh, my database did have emails in it for everybody there, except for Billy Bob, so I'll exclude him. In which case, I can say edit the recipients list and just uncheck him. Or later on, let me click okie dokie. When I click next and I go to, well, we already have our message written, you know, the fields instead of adding one of the merge blocks, so we can click next. And here, I could exclude him here. If I didn't want to add Billy Bob, in any case, we cover this. So really, pretty much the same thing, except when we get to step six. Let's go ahead and do the electronic to email merge. Click on it. Oh, my goodness. Well, who do we want to send it to? Click on the drop-down arrow. And my database should have a field called emails, and it does. It's that field or that header for the column that contains all the emails. Okay, let's go ahead and click cancel in case if you forgot. Let's minimize this down to the taskbar and open up my database. Double click. Okay, read only, right? Because we're working on it through Word, that is. And there's the emails. So we've got emails. Great. Let's go ahead and close out. 
and restore and then click on electronic email so we have to match the fields two is going to be their email addresses and the subject line is thank you and then the email format you can do HTML plain text or do it as an attachment let's do HTML that's hypertext markup language so if you got a bunch of fancy images and formatted text it'll go with it as opposed to plain text which is plain no formatting no fancy images so do you want to send all the records just the current one or from you know record number two to record number three in any case let's do all click okie dokie and you see down below another program is using Outlook in any case it's going to send it through Microsoft's Outlook that's where the connection is so let me go ahead and open up Outlook click on the start button go to Outlook 2016 and let's go to the out box and there's all three there's the reminders pumpkin carving oh that's fun and I'll talk about that in just a minute because if you're not familiar with Microsoft Outlook it's more than an email program but when it comes to sending emails if you have Outlook installed with the rest of the office suite like Word then it'll put it all in the out box thank you for you just to come in here and click on send and receive and it's sending them off and there they go and I better hurry and close out because they're going to come back in my inbox here because they're junk emails they're not really somebody I'm sending it to in any case if you want to learn more about Outlook where it's more than just an email program but as you saw in the pop-up you can have task reminders things that you need to do assign tasks to other people well, there's a reason why you want to go ahead and watch my training video on Outlook so you can assign tasks to other people via email you can also schedule meetings and appointments it's really quite a cool program in any case I digress let's get back to Word and so there we go our electronic emails what's the next one start mail merge envelopes ah there's a good one you know we can either click it here and not go through the step by step if you feel comfortable otherwise you know just what we did with the letters is we went back 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 and then we chose electronic email then we went forward 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 I mean you can do it that way or let's just jump right to it envelopes envelopes has nothing to do with the letter right we're gonna be getting out of that and so it brings up the option for envelopes you know what envelopes do you want to print or merge everybody over from your database into I mean is it a simple you know size 10 envelope where it's four one eighth by nine and a half inches or is there something else you doing something bigger than that I'll keep it simple and for the delivery address and the return address you can have it well the auto is the default placement right here but for the delivery address if I want to go well from the left 1.4 inches as opposed to auto I mean that's really tight to the left hand margin isn't it in any case your flavor you can do what you want let me go back down to auto leave it as is and then you want to click on the printing options because this is how you're going to feed your envelopes into your printer that is if your printer accepts envelopes in any case do you want to have the envelopes faced up in the center or to the right I mean is that how you feed it you'll probably have to do a test run before you start printing all of them off and do you want it face up or do you put them face down so the return address delivery address is now flipped over and we're on the other side but it's face up and you got the clockwise rotation well let's just go ahead and go with what we got here and click okie dokie and it says in order to apply the selected envelope options we're going to destroy everything you have here and overwrite it it's going to be lost are you okay with that well all right and there we go so now we have our standard 10 envelope the return address and then the delivery address is down here so for the return address let's go ahead and type it in our company address voila and now let's see the delivery address well where in the heck is that is it here 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 there we go you know an easy way to identify where that box is out the text box that we can insert our merge fields into for the delivery address is to come up here and click on the home tab go to the paragraph group and yes turn on your codes and so when I click out well you can see a code right there go ahead and click there and there's the text box which by the way as you've watched in the text box training video you can hover over the border of it until you get a four-way arrow and you can click and drag and you know put it like wherever so let's go ahead and hit undo and leave it as is so with the cursor flashing there let's go back to our mailings tab or you know you can come over here into the mail merge group and 
add an address block here, which is a lot easier, or if you didn't have it, that's okay because it's up here on the ribbon. Same thing, just not step by step. So address block, and well, there's the preview for this. Is that okie dokie with you? Yeah, I think so. Let's click okie dokie and address block. Let's go ahead and click a preview and let's toggle through. Let's go back. Oh, well, let's turn off the codes. Deselect and then go back to the mailings tab and then go forward. Oh, it looks great. And then when you're ready, well, you don't have to have the step by step wizard to get to the end to do the finish and merge because guess what? It's also up here in the finish group. You can also merge to Acrobat PDF, but let's just do this. Click on it and say, well, do you want to print them or do you want to edit individual documents? Well, let's go ahead and do edit individuals. Click on that. Let's do all. Click okie dokie. And there we go. There's first letter, second letter, third. Cool. Go ahead and hit print, but make sure you got your envelopes ready to go and not start printing off this on a bunch of blank sheets of paper. And then you can go ahead and save this as your envelopes. Come up here, click save. Well, if you want to save it, I'll click cancel when I close out and don't save it. We're back to our merge document. And so what's next after this? Let's click on start mail merge. Ooh, labels. That ought to be fun. Okay, let's do it. Click on it. And first off, it wants to know the printer information, like the tray. You can do the default tray or select other options. Then the label information, the vendor, is it Avery US Letter or is it some other vendor like uh, Ace Label? Then once you select the vendor, go ahead and look on the box that contains your labels so you can find the product number. And then we can go ahead and let me scroll down here, see if I can find it really fast. There we go, 5160. Let's select that. You can see the height is one inch and the width is 2.63 inches on a page size of eight and a half by 11. Now, if you don't find your label in here, you can go ahead and click on New and do a Frankenstein. Create your own. So give your label a name that you can easily identify. And then set your margins away from the edge of the page. You know, your top and side margins, vertical pitch, horizontal pitch, and then your label. The height is one inch, label width, and that can be up to about three across and ten down. So a total of 30 on a page. And then you can choose the letter size, which will either give you more or less. In any case, let me click Cancel. So once we've got what we want here, let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And it says, everything you have here will be lost to make way for our labels. Okay, bye-bye. And if you're wondering where the labels are at, well, up here on the horizontal ruler, you can see from the left indent to the right, or the grid there to the next grid, and that's the first column, the second column, the third column, and then you've got the first row, second row, third row, and so on. Or if it helps, come up here on the Home tab, go to the Paragraph group, and turn on the Show Code. So, ah, better. So we can see where we can type in our text. And then, of course, the code that represents the cell within the table. So there's cell 1, cell 2, cell 3. And then the next cell. So let's come back up here, click on the Mailings tab. And we have our recipients, don't we? Well... We've got the edit recipient list, so it's still tied to this document. If not, you click on select recipients, and, well, you can use Outlook or use an existing list, in which case it'll open up and it says, find me, select it, and then it'll pull it in for you to edit, you know, just what we did with the letters. So we can go ahead and choose who we want to include or who not to include. We'll include Billy Bob, or Bob Billy, and click okie dokie. And then what we need to do in the first cell here is to insert the merge fields. And you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either come up here and do step-by-step, -step, first name. Okay, the preview's on, which is fine. Let's go ahead and turn that off so we can see the first name. And what's interesting is that we've got the first name, but in the next label it says next record. Now why is it doing that? The reason why is because when it pulls in the first record and we update it and it wants to pull in the next record, well the next label is going to be the next record because without that code it won't pull in any additional records but just the first record which is very annoying because we want all the records so you can do first name you know last name well hit the space bar and then insert the merge field last name then hit enter then go ahead and insert address well you get the idea let me go ahead and hit undo a couple of times because the address block no oh, let me go ahead and redo that hit the backspace key a couple of times 
seems a lot easier. Address block. As you can see here, you see how you do one, like the letters, then everything else is pretty much along the same lines. Just a few differences here and there as far as working with the mail merge. So we'll go with this option here and click Okie Dokie. There's the address block. Now I need to take that address block and add it to all the other labels. You could go ahead and select it, copy, and come over here and paste it. Ugh, that's going to take forever. Let's go ahead and hit undo. Instead, come back over here and say that you want to come up on the mailings tab to the right and insert fields group and update the labels. And it says in the pop-up, if you're creating labels, update all labels in the document to use the information from the recipient list. Yes. And it automatically adds the address block to all the others. So the first address block pulls in the first record within the database. Then when it comes over here, it says next. So it goes to the next record within the database, next record, and so on. Are you following where I'm drifting? Well, let's go ahead and click on preview results. And if you can't see everybody, that's OK. The merge, well, let's go ahead and go down this way. So we just see number four of a total of four. It's Billy Bob, but if I go back the other way, they start scrolling through, right? There we go. Homer, Mr. Humphreys, Doug Heffernan, Billy Bob. Cool. So you don't want to freak out if you can't see everybody because, well, you got to toggle through to be able to see everybody when you're doing preview results. And then if you have more than a total of 30 in this example, because we've got a total of 30 here, it will leave it as is. And when you do the finish merge, it knows that there's more than 30, so we'll go ahead and it'll print off the second page, third page, as many pages as it needs to be able to pull in everybody's address from your database. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do finish merge, and we can edit individual documents again. So if you want to do it that way, that's fine. But before I do that, you may want to do a test print, because I don't know about you, when it comes to my printer, when I first started this and I hit the print button, it wouldn't print exactly aligned on the labels. So I'd print it on a sheet of paper and then I'd take that sheet and I'd put it in front or behind a sheet of labels and hold it up to the light. That way I can see through it and go, okay, you know what? This guy right here, let me click and drag. You see how it bumps all the columns over just a little bit? So I can get it more lined up with the labels if I need to undo. Or if Homer Simpson is printing on the border of the label, doesn't look good, then we can hover over the top margin and push everybody down. So you may need to do some tweakage. In any case, if everything's good, then go ahead and finish your merge. You can go right to print or just edit individual documents. We can do it for all. Click Okie Dokie. Opens up a new window, which is the same as what we came from because, well, we only have a total of four. Doesn't look good unless I turn off the codes here. That looks better. And if you're like, oh, that's not printing right, well, then you can close out of here and go back to the original so you can make adjustments. Maybe this column needs to come over a bit more. Maybe this one needs to go out more. You see how you can go ahead and tweak with the table column here? In any case. Okay, next, let's go ahead and do a directory. And to do that, um, gosh, I don't want to use this here. So we can just start from scratch. We can go ahead and close out of here. Besides, it'll be a great review. And let's just open up a blank document. Double click. A directory is just like it sounds, like a phone directory. If you want to have everybody's last name and then their phone number or extension, you want to go ahead and create one of those? Well, come up here, click on the Mailings tab. I'm starting from scratch, a new blank document. So we can click on Start Mail Merge. We'll do Directory. We need to select our database. Click on Select Recipients. Use an existing database, which is on the desktop. It's in my workbook. Double click. It's on Sheet 1 within the workbook. Say Okie Dokie. And then let's go ahead and insert our merge fields like last name, space, and then insert the phone number field, and then just hit enter once. So that way, let's click on the Home tab and turn on the codes, that when it's done with the first record, it will go to the next record and the next one and not have them one record right after another. So Simpson, their phone number, and then if I didn't have that extra paragraph, it would put right after the phone number, the last name of the next person, and so on, which 
is very annoying and not organized. So let's go ahead and click on the mailings tab. We can do a preview and we can toggle through it. Looks good. Let's go ahead and do finish and merge. Let's edit the individual documents. Click on that. Let's do it for all. Okie dokie. Hey, well, let's turn off the codes. Doesn't that look good? Well, except for Bob. He doesn't have a phone number. I should have excluded him. Well, that's okay. Just go ahead and close out of here, not save it. Come back. Edit recipient list. Get rid of Mr. Bob there. And say okie dokie. And then finish. And merge to edit individual documents. Okay. <sighs> that's nice. Oh, and if you'd like, I have an ADD moment. We can go ahead and close out of here and not save it. Come back and let's turn off the preview results. And in fact, how about if we add, hit the backspace, a tab stop right at the, well, we can pull it not so far away right here. Hit the tab key once so we've got some space. But how about if we add a leader to that so it leads our eye from the last name to the phone number? Sound cool? All right. Come up here, double click on the left tab stop and select that stop. And say you want to set it for this leader right here, dot, dot, dot. Say set. Click okie dokie. There you go. You can go ahead and preview it. Well, let's turn off the codes because, yeah, there we go. And then let's go back to the mailings. Looks good. Click on finish and merge to edit individual documents. All okay. Ah, isn't it cool how it comes together? Hey, if you don't know what I'm doing, you got to watch my tab stop training video. So you can combine it with your mail merge for the directory and get something just beautiful. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.